Hello everyone. My name is Dong Young Kim, a professor at the Korea Development Institute School of Public Policy and Management. Welcome to the e-course on the Korean experience with a public dispute resolution. This e-course is designed to share the Korean experience in dealing with serious public disputes since the late 1980s when its democratization process began. Among various types of disputes, this e-course will focus on two persistent and particularly serious types of public disputes. First, not in my backyard, so-called NIMBY syndrome, and second, environmental dispute. Throughout this e-course, we will discuss why such disputes are difficult to resolve with conventional approaches and suggest alternative mechanisms to resolve public disputes that were demonstrated in some successful cases in Korea. The course will conclude with a discussion of how to improve national or organizational dispute management system. This module will look at the general inherent causes of NIMBY dispute and compounding sources of difficulty in resolving such dispute, and then suggest guiding principles to prevent and overcome such dispute. We will first look at the primary reasons for the resident opposition to the development of NIMBY facilities and the factors that can escalate such conflict, then move on to the mechanisms that can either prevent or resolve those conflicts. Some public facilities are necessary for the benefit of the public, but locally unwanted by nearby residents. Such facilities include waste disposal facilities, nuclear power plants, psychiatric hospitals, crematorium, power transmission towers, and substations, homeless shelters. Residents often seriously oppose to a proposal for such facilities in their own neighborhood. That's why we call this social phenomenon as NIMBY, not in my backyard syndrome. There are many reasons why residents are angry about NIMBY facilities and why it is so difficult to resolve such a dispute. Let us look at these reasons one by one. First, there are three fundamental reasons why residents are angry about NIMBY facilities. Sometimes, People are angry because they feel threatened by risk not of their own making. In our highly complex technological society, there is a great deal of uncertainty as to the risk associated with nuclear waste treatment facility, incinerator, and high voltage transmission tower. This uncertainty leaves residents feeling that they have little control over the risk they face. They want answers to the questions on such risk from people they can trust. Second, residents are prone to anger from direct harm from the facilities to themselves and their property. These harms include environmental health hazard, excessive noise, aesthetic concerns, bad odors, traffic congestions that cause decrease in property values. People look to the cause of their hurt and want compensation for the pain they had to bear. Third, the public benefits from a facility, such as electricity, is spread out over a wide area. But the costs are often concentrated over a small region, for example, the area that has a power plant or high voltage transmission towers. The resident in that region may feel this exchange is unfair. Public anger in each of the three circumstances can be compounded by related factors. Citizens are likely to rise up in anger when they feel weak without political power or extensive resources in the face of public officials and private developers who seem to be more powerful than they are. Consequently, they may try to build coalitions to countervailing existing powerful parties, which leads to power struggle. Also, people are quite indignant when sense that the government has manipulated trivialized, ignored, or lied to them in the process of installing NIMBY facilities. Sometimes, residents are not aware of government proposal to cite NIMBY facilities or the existence of public hearing on that proposal, 
since they cannot access the public notice on the proposal easily. Public display of anger by resident or advocacy groups may also be a strategic tool for improving a bargaining position later, bluffing others, or building political credibility to politicize their membership. They adopt such a hostile approach because they believe that approach will be better their interest rather than civil discourse. Often citing decisions for NIMBY facilities follow a traditional unilateral decision-making model, so-called decide, announce, defend. In that model, the government makes a fixed plan behind closed doors, tell a few people about it, and stick with it rigidly with an assumption that unilateral action without involving stakeholders throughout the project can promote efficiency. In other words, quick achievement of facility siting. However, this model often proves first because such unilateral action actually delay project implementation by inducing angry opponents from citizens who feel weak, unfair, or ignored. Now, it is not difficult to understand why a community selected as a host site tends to fight back with anger. However, it is possible to make siting decisions that respond to the concerns of potential host communities. I would like to suggest three key principles to better address facility siting controversies. It is important to involve actively all groups who may be affected by a siting decision. Community representatives should participate in determining need, developing criteria for selecting a site, assessing impact, discussing mitigation strategies, and determining appropriate compensation for unavoidable harm. They should be concerted before key decisions are made. This open process increases credibility and legitimacy. Lack of trust is a major roadblock to making a consensual siting decision with all the stakeholders. Hiding problems and uncertainties or ignoring the concerns of opponents will undermine trust. In order to build a trust, the government should be open and transparent about the difficulties of decision making and acknowledging any past mistakes. When negative impacts from facility cannot be prevented, Various forms of compensation should be negotiated. A comprehensive compensation packages may include anything from property value guarantees to reducing risk unrelated to the new facility, to tax reductions, to amenities such as parks, or to creation of equivalent habitat when loss is unavoidable. However, compensation should only be used in relation to impacts over and above minimum health and safety standards specified by law. Now, let's review what we have discussed. NIMBY facilities may cause public anger inherently due to uncertain risk and unavoidable harms. Unilateral actions of the public institutions driven by value of efficiency may escalate conflict by making a hosting community vulnerable, weak, and ignored. Rather than criticizing the angry resident as being selfish, or rather than relying upon standing rules and regulations, the government should engage all key stakeholders in trustworthy manners to understand their concerns, to search for objective criteria, to select sites, and to search for creative options for compensations.